Okay, we got the 2019 RAV4, all new, new platform, new body, new technology. It's got Toyota Safety Sense P2.0, so in addition to the dynamic radar cruise control, lane departure alert, uh, pre-collision with pedestrian detection, automatic high beams, you're also getting lane tracing assist, and you are also getting road sign detection, and it also has improved uh, pre-collision uh, sensing with low light pedestrian and also bicyclist uh, detection as well so all that's available on the 2019 and i mean look at the lines on this thing it is aggressive and sporty this is the xle all-wheel drive in white it's got the low profile uh, rims or rails on the top there this is the all-wheel drive they added the uh look at this back here you got the dual exhaust just a really cool, aggressive look. This one's the XLE, it has the power lift gate. And we're gonna take it for a spin. Whole new body, it's TNGA, so Toyota's new global architecture. It's more rigid, it rides better better fuel economy and then it's got the 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine it's the dynamic force engine like uh, that new system where you get better fuel efficiency and also more power so this has uh, 203 horsepower as compared to 176 in the same trim on the 2018 so we're gonna take it for a spin this also has Entune 3.0 with Apple CarPlay available if you, for all you iPhone users So one of the things we want to show you on this drive is the lane tracing assist that's available when you're in dynamic radar cruise control on the highway. So that's where we're going to go. While we're waiting, I'll show you. This also has a snow button, mud and sand, rock and dirt. So multi-terrain select. You can actually change the way that this car handles in certain conditions. turn on mud and sand it's going to show you how it's vehicle stability control turned off pre-collision brake systems unavailable when you're in this system this is for low speeds off-roading it con uh, controls how the all-wheel drive system works it also uh, how the traction control works as well all right so we're back to normal driving you also have an eco normal and a sport driving mode which changes how the uh, new eight-speed transmission shifts to give you either more fuel efficiency or more power. You also have an electronic parking brake with a brake hold button, which I'm gonna engage. You'll see it there in yellow and green. So it's telling me that it's holding. So I'm actually gonna take my foot off of the brake while we're sitting here and it's gonna hold me in place. So I don't have to keep my foot on the brake the entire time. So really cool features that have never been available before in the RAV4 are now available. Really good job with this redesign. Engine 3.0, again, gives you Apple CarPlay when you're plugged in. You have connected services. Up here's an SOS button. I'm going to engage that while we're sitting here. Hold it for three seconds. Connecting to the emergency call center. To cancel, please press the button again. recorded an emergency call canceled so that's active and working and then all you got to do is hit the gas when you are ready to move and that brake hold button releases and let you take off So the lane departure you can turn on and off uh, here in the uh, on the steering wheel. So this button right here, I just turned it off, turned it back on. Lane tracing assist turned on, steering assist is active. 
As soon as we get on the highway and I get into dynamic radar cruise control, I'll show you how that works. One of the things I like about driving our Toyota vehicles that have the TNGA platform, so that new Toyota's new global architecture platform that they're uh, starting to put in all of our vehicles, they handle fantastic. The, it feels more responsive to me. It feels more solid. Um, and then again, it's giving you better fuel efficiency. It's being set up to where uh, the ride is um, smoother. Um, it's not as bouncy. It's a more rigid frame. It's just a fantastic handling vehicle. A lot of fun to drive. accelerating up that hill on the four cylinder. All right, so I went ahead and turned on radar cruise control. Get over. And I'm gonna, uh, I'm doing 72, shouldn't be going that quick. I'm gonna go ahead and set it here, 65. Right now I've got my max distance at three bars, which is approximately 160 feet. I'm gonna drop it down 130, 100 feet approximately. And so you'll notice there the white lines are telling me it's reading the lines and you also see the steering wheel moving. It's working to keep me in the center of the lane. That's the lane tracing assist. And I know that's active because I see those blue bars there on the side. And so I have my hands off the wheel. It's following the curve of this road and doing the driving itself. I'll probably get an alert here shortly telling me to put my hands back on the wheel. But as of this point, the car's in control, dynamic radar cruise control, so it's looking for vehicles ahead of me. I'm gonna go ahead and get over because this is an exit. And so this thing is steering to keep me in the center of the lane. It's reading the lines. It's reading the car in front of me. LTA hold steering wheel. So it gave me just a little alert there saying, hey, make sure you're staying in control. Let's go ahead and get off at Brownsboro and we'll circle back. see down there it also gives you the speed limit of the road you're on that's part of the road sign assist it's actually reading the road signs it knows uh, based off of uh, satellites and GPS where the you know what the speed limit is on some of the more major roads that you're on and it gives you all that information This car is also equipped with blind spot monitoring, which is here on the side. Let me see if I can demonstrate that really quickly. So I just turned blind spot monitoring off and now I'm turning it back on and it lights up. So when somebody's in my blind spot, that's gonna stay lit orange the entire time that uh, that person's in my blind spot while I have the car in drive. And then if I were to have my turn signal on in that direction, it would actually flash. It's not gonna beep at me, but it's just a great little alert system where if I see that that is orange, then I need to do some further investigation before I merge. This 
car also has dual air control available so passenger and driver can have different air temperatures set also has heated front seats as well available in this vehicle you've got usb auxiliary a 120 outlet the old cigarette lighter down there and then you also have two usbs in here for charging only yeah he's gonna have to turn around nobody would let him over it's the holiday season driving in louisville so once we get a little bit of clearance up here i want to demonstrate the lane departure alert and how that works So when you're in dynamic radar cruise control, you have the lane tracing assist where the car is working to keep you in the center of the lane that you're in. And so lane tracing or lane departure alert works when you're approximately 32 miles an hour or faster. do anything with it yet get a little bit of clearance so I'm gonna drift over as you watch the screen here and make sure it's reading it okay and I'm going fast enough but now there's traffic and drift over this way gives you the alert and guide you back towards your lane. So it doesn't work like when you're in dynamic radar cruise control. It's still the lane departure alert that you have on the uh, previous issues, uh, previous models where it alerts you, there's a flash and a beep, and then it guides you with the steering assist back towards your lane. I do feel like it's a more sturdy system than in the 2018 version because of that lane tracing assist before the steering wheel would go like this and just kind of guide you towards your lane the way it feels to me now is it guides you over and then straightens again so a little bit more robust a little bit more intuitive for that lane departure and I also wanted to see how this car handled this is a curvy road here brake hold is something I need to get used to. I always forget to take my foot off the brake, but it's such a nice thing. That brake hold, I had somebody point out like if you had a kid in the back, like they're in their car seat, they drop their bottle, dropped a toy, something like that. You come up to a stop at a red light where you can safely, you know, reach around and get that. You don't have to put the car in park. You can, you know, depress the brake to engage the brake hold button and then safely reach around and get the toy or the bottle, something like that. And then as soon as you're ready to go, all you got to do is hit the gas. It's a really great feature that's becoming available on more and more Toyotas like this 2019 RAV4. So if you look here on the screen now, you'll see the all-wheel drive system. It's telling me where it's sending power to the front and to the rear. Those blue bars light up. That's how the power is being distributed between the front and the back. And so what this car wants to do is operate as a front-wheel drive vehicle to maximize your fuel efficiency. This gets more fuel, uh, better fuel mileage than the previous models, while still having more horsepower. 
which is impressive. And so that all-wheel drive system, what it wants to do is operate in front-wheel drive as much as possible, maximizing your fuel efficiency. But when you're taking off, when you're going up a hill, if there's traction, you know, issues with the road, it can send power to the rear tires as well, giving you maximum traction. more Toyota overall a really fun car to drive handles fantastic more power better fuel efficiency tons of safety features built into this with the Toyota safety sense P with the 2.0 the updated versions including the lane tracing assist which is just a neat uh, driving feature to have especially on the highway and the roadside detection as well Drive 2019 RAV4 XLE all-wheel drive. Come out to Oxmoor Toyota and see us.